Thank you, Andy. We are truly honored that with this incredibly busy schedule you have, you, you found time to come to, Stern, to Stern's graduations not once but twice today. So I'm now absolutely thrilled to introduce today's distinguished speaker, David Solomon, Chief Executive Officer and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the global financial powerhouse Goldman Sachs. When Mr. Solomon first accepted our invitation to speak to the class of 2023, I was thrilled because of the long connections NYU Stern and Goldman Sachs have had, partly through education, partly through location, and an enormous mutual network. But I was even more thrilled because of who Mr. Solomon is. He has achieved extraordinary success by any measure. He has built a career on hard-won experience holding leadership roles at several firms before joining Goldman Sachs, where he rose to become president and chief operating officer before becoming its chief executive. More than this though, he has also made great impact in other areas of his life by cultivating his passions. Be they for music, many of you probably know this, he's a prolific DJ. <laughs> <laughs> Of a service, he sits on the boards of the Robin Hood Foundation and the New York Presbyterian Hospital, amongst many others. David Solomon is living proof of Stern's motto that you can both do well and do good. For all these reasons, we are honored that he's here today, so please join me in giving him a true NYU Stern welcome. Thank you, Dean Sundaram. I only wish my mom could have heard that generous introduction. <laughs> as President Hamilton said, many have stood on this stage. If you had told me as a kid, growing up outside the city of New York, that someday I would be on the stage at Madison Square Garden, I would have hoped in my dreams it would have been as a rock and roll drummer. <laughs> my mom would have thought, I would be lugging around amplifiers as a stagehand. But here we are. As was said, Goldman Sachs has a long-standing relationship with NYU Stern, and rightly so. Some of the most impressive people I know have graduated from this institution, and I was humbled when Dean Sundaram asked me to be your keynote speaker. My thanks go out to him, Vice Dean Whitelaw, President Hamilton, and all the faculty and staff for welcoming me here today. It is an honor to be a part of this celebration, so let me start by saying congratulations to the class of 2023. I remember my own college graduation fondly, 39 years ago, on a beautiful May day in upstate New York, I had a robe on my shoulders, penny loafers on my feet, and I swear to God, a full head of hair on my head. <laughs> I remember going back to my dorm after the ceremony, opening all the windows, and blasting It's Over by Boz Skaggs. All of the parents here know what I mean. If any of the graduates do, I'm very impressed. I also had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do with my life. My mom wanted me to pursue a path that hadn't been available to her. If she was graduating alongside you today, she would have been headed to medical school. But she graduated in 1960 in a very different world where that wasn't an option for her and so many other women. So she wanted me to be a doctor, though she would have settled for a lawyer. Now, I made it through four years of college without taking a single physical science, so doctor was out. That left lawyer, but I was busy. I played rugby. I was the social chair of my fraternity. I tended bar at Don's Rock, the local watering hole. I was doing a lot of those things. One of those things was not studying for the LSATs, so lawyer was out. I just had to get a job. I was rejected by most of the places I applied to, including Goldman Sachs. And eventually, I landed at a bank called the Irving Trust Company. In deciding my next step, I had three important priorities. 
move to New York City, get an apartment with my college roommates, and continue right where we left off. In other words, this wasn't the first step in some complex master plan. This was more like an episode in a 1980s sitcom. <laughs> As I prepared to enter the professional world, I kept thinking about something my grandmother used to say to me. Don't be in a hurry, she would say. I've reflected on those words over the years and how true they are. Don't be in a hurry. Let me give you an example. One day a young woman working at Goldman Sachs asked to see me. I had known her for a long time, so I thought that she would be very comfortable and be very candid with me. She said, I need some career advice. I have to figure out what I'm going to do next. So I said, well, tell me a little bit about how's it going? How do you like your job? Oh, she said, I love my job. It's so interesting. I wake up every day. I can't believe how excited I am about what I'm doing. I said, that's great. Tell me about my boss. Tell me about your boss. Oh my goodness, she said, she's amazing. I've always wanted to work for a woman partner. I've got a personal relationship with her. She's mentoring me. She's incredible. I said, wow, that's fantastic and so great to hear. Tell me about the people you're working with. She said, oh my God, I never thought I would have a group of people, a group of friends that I'm closer to than the people I went to college with. But this group of people I'm working with, we go out together, we're in it together, we're having a great time. So I looked at her and I said, let me get this straight. You like your job, you like your boss, you like the people you're working with, you want my advice? Go back to work. <laughs> For most people, it's usually not like this. Don't be in a hurry. See where this takes you. All of you here today are at the beginning of a long journey, and it's not going to be a straight line or a smooth path. In fact, sometimes it's going to be more like off-roading on an ATV. It's okay to enjoy the ride. And when you're enjoying the ride, it's okay to be patient and stay put a little while. More than a little success comes from seeing where life will take you. But I also believe there are certain foundational values, if you work at them, they'll give you a better chance of looking back when you're older and being satisfied with how you've spent your time. And today I'd like to talk to you about three of them. The first is resilience. Life is a marathon, not a sprint. You're never going to get where you want as quickly as you want. There will be all sorts of obstacles in your way, but one of the big mistakes that I think a lot of people can make is when a job starts getting tough, they give up and they go someplace else. The better choice may sometimes be to work through those challenges. For instance, I like to remind people that I was rejected by Goldman Sachs not once, but twice. <laughs> the second time I made it to the final round interview where I had to meet with a partner of the firm. When he arrived, an hour late by the way, he was right out of central casting portly, suspenders, he looked at me, he looked at my resume, and he looked back up at me and he said, David, let's face it, you're really not Goldman Sachs material. <laughs> Which, if true, is really bad for Goldman Sachs today. <laughs> nothing that's worthwhile comes quickly, and nothing that's worthwhile comes without persistence. If you live and you think this way, you'll be surprised how much you may start to enjoy the hustle. Second is excellence. Know that excellence is a choice. To go the distance, you must refuse to settle for good enough. Good enough isn't. You don't see the Knicks after their horrific loss last Friday in Miami going to Adam Silver and saying, hey Adam, let us into the next round. We played good enough. For me, I had a perfectly good career when I got to Goldman Sachs. After a year and a half at Irving Trust, I went to a firm called Drexel Burnham Lambert, which promptly went out of business five years later. Luckily, I landed on my feet at Bear Stearns. <laughs> no pattern developing. But then opportunity came knocking. I was competing for a piece of business with Goldman Sachs, and one of the partners started to recruit me. I had faced a decision. I had risen quickly at Bear Stearns. At 37 years old, I had a seat on the firm's management committee. If I went to Goldman Sachs, I would be taking a major demotion. But for me, the choice was simple. 
I had the opportunity to work at the premier financial services firm in the world. In other words, to play for the Yankees. The organization was filled with smart, motivated, talented people. And if I was going to work in the industry, I wanted to work with the best. As I look back now, it's clear that taking that step made all the difference. Choose excellence, even when it's not easy. Third is empathy. Remember to connect as a human. In business and life, relationships are crucial, no matter what path you chose. An ability to connect with people, earn their trust, can not only advance your career, it will make your journey more fulfilling. When someone does something nice for you, write a handwritten note, even if you have terrible handwriting. I may not be the doctor my mom wanted me to be, but I sure write like one. <laughs> Take the time to share something you genuinely like or appreciate about someone. Ask how they're doing. Try to understand their perspective especially if it's different from yours. And I might be dating myself here on this, but pick up the phone and talk to people. During the pandemic, I started picking up the phone and calling people, colleagues, CEOs, no agenda, just, hey, this is a difficult time. Want to check in? How are you? I didn't think much of it at the time, but later people started telling me how meaningful this gesture had been to them. And in more than a few cases, it shifted and deepened our relationship. People want to authentically connect with people. Fight the urge to have your relationships intermediated by technology. Talk to people. And lastly, remember, how you spend your time is how you spend your life. You will always have a choice about where to put your time. And as life goes on, you will need to strike a balance between work, family, and your personal interests. I've learned a lot about this from my dad. When I was in high school, I once complained to him that I did not have enough time in the day. I had essays to write for school. I played three sports. I was scooping 31 flavors of ice cream at Baskin Robbins. Rocky Road was my favorite, by the way. I was having trouble figuring out how to do it all. So my dad told me to take out a calendar and write down everything I did each day. And I noticed if I had to account for every minute, I actually spent a lot of time in an ad hoc way, lying on the couch, watching TV, talking to my girlfriend. Now, there's nothing wrong with any of these things, but I wasn't purposeful in my choices. Well, today it won't surprise you that my schedule is scheduled. I know where I'm going to be for the rest of the year, almost down to the hour. But wherever you are in your life, be purposeful with your time. You do have time to take the long road. You don't have time to waste. Life is a marathon, not a sprint. Excellence is a choice. Connect as a human. How you spend your time is how you spend your life. All of these ideas can help you as you begin to navigate the journey that's in front of you. But as I close, I want to go back to what my grandmother said. Don't be in a hurry. I've been working for 39 years, and I feel super young, except when I go kite surfing, and then I need to lie on the floor for an hour and get my back a little realigned. But I hope at least for the next few decades, I'll be working. And with advances in medicine we're seeing, I think people your age will work even longer, or you're going to have very lively retirements. So remember, you're at the beginning of a long journey. Enjoy it. Your generation will certainly face its share of challenges. The pandemic, a shaky economy, a tense geopolitical environment. But if I were you, I would be excited about the progress you're going to see, increased life expectancy, progress in the fight against all sorts of diseases, a more sustainable world for all of us. It may feel like an uncertain time, but to me, it's rich with opportunity. Technology is going to advance in ways that are hard for us to comprehend. We might have to ask the class of 2033 to explain it to us. Never mind a moonshot, your generation is going to Mars. So face the future with confidence. Your number one responsibility in these early days is to find a place where you can learn. Yes, another one. Where you can work with terrific people, where you can have an opportunity to grow. Don't worry about where the journey will take you. 
Just go down the path that excites you and see where it leads. And if you do that, not only will you have a fulfilling life, not only will you have an impact, but you'll be in for one hell of a ride. Thank you and sincere congratulations.